Every day, each one of us is affected by agronomy. The food you eat, the coffee you drink, the ethanol-based gas in your car, the grass on the golf course, the natural fibers of the clothing you wear are all products of agronomy. Agronomy is the science of soil management and crop production. Growing plants may seem simple. They need soil, nutrients, sunshine, and water. However, in agronomy, it's essential to learn the soil's characteristics and how the soil works together with the growing crop. A grower must know what nutrients the crop needs and how to implement these nutrients so that the crops grow and mature. They also need to factor in how weather and other environmental components affect the crop at all stages and how to manage weeds, insects, fungi, and other crop pests. Agronomy is a way of growing things to use for food, fuel, and resources that we need on a daily basis. I actually have a quote in my office that says, we do not inherit this ground from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. So that's very important for us when we're growing and using our soil to make sure that we still have every nutrient in there that we can use in the future as well. There are many moving parts when it comes to growing a crop from beginning to end. The basic needs of plants are just uh, light, water, carbon dioxide, and nutrients from the soil. Farmers, it's in order to make sure they're maximizing their plants and that they're getting everything they need, should really just know the biology of the plant and what that particular plant needs. And then farmers should also just speak with agronomists in order to get information on new crops. A healthy plant will result in a healthy soil and leave the entire field environment healthier for the next year and just long term, that's what we want for the most sustainable system that we can have. As you can see, it takes a lot of work to grow a plant that could be used for food, feed, or fiber. We take and look at our technology that we have. We have harvest maps, and we take and look at how the previous year's crop yielded for us, and what were the challenges of the certain acres, and what acres actually did really well, and why did they do that? And it starts with the plant food, um, fertilizers. We put them on specific parts of the the ground, uh, the ground's tested, uh, soil tested and gridded, and so we put the nutrients where the ground can utilize it the best to get us our best yields. The co-op helps me making decisions on my farm by keeping track and helping me record um, grid samples that we have and we generally grid sample every three to four years and they keep track of what we're applying and what we're taking off so we can balance the soil the best we can for the best plant food that we can get. One of the things we have to watch out for is drought and also be too much moisture. Any stress that that corn or soybeans are under, we have to watch for it and we need to keep those plants under it the minimum amount of stress as we possibly can. For instance, one planted kernel of corn produces 500 to 700 kernels per ear. There are typically only one to two ears on a corn stalk. Corn has many uses, feed for livestock, food for people, and ethanol for fuel. Plastics, packing materials, diapers, tires, toothpaste, shampoo, and crayons can also be made from corn. Soybeans also have many uses. One planted seed produces 100 to 200 soybeans per plant. They're used to produce livestock feed, cooking oil, biodiesel, ink, and more. Whereas wheat, another production crop, is used for foods such as bread, pasta, cakes, cookies, and flour. One planted wheat seed produces about 50 kernels per plant to make all of these things. Efficiencies over the year when I started farming in 1988 to now is quite substantial. Back when we started, we just had planters planting seed into the ground and lights just beeped if there was seed going through the seed tube. We drove the equipment and the equipment wasn't near as technological as it is today. The planters that I have today drive themselves. They shut off themselves. You can take and monitor where the seeds are going. You can check the spacing of the seeds, the depths all on the go. In 1960, a farmer was only able to feed 26 people per year. Today, the average U.S. farmer feeds 166 people annually. We try to do everything we can to maintain the soil, make sure we're getting the highest nutrients out of it and the highest yield we can, as well as preserving it for our children. 
These are just a few examples of the impact that agronomy has in providing the resources we need in the world, with the most important resource being food. Thanks for learning with Growing Agriculture Together. Find more resources at growingagricultureTogether.com.